Hi everyone, uh, my name is Simon Anderson and I'd like to welcome you to my first ever YouTube video. Uh, I want to apologise for maybe the lighting or the sound. Uh, as a stills photographer I haven't done many videos, but hopefully I will improve with time. Uh, but for now I just want to show you what kit I keep in my camera bag. It's a what's in your bag YouTube video. Uh, just so you can see what uh, sort of camera equipment I use maybe on a daily basis. This is my bag, which is the Lower Pro 200AW, a nice big bag, nice and padded. Uh, as you can see, it's got uh, these big camera straps, good for taking that weight. If you've got lots of things in your bag, lots of padding, has a the mesh padded back there. You know, if you get a bit sweaty on your long walks carrying all this gear. So we look, you have a tripod uh, or a place to put your tripod legs so you can uh, put your tripod here if you're carrying that with some straps. The only thing I don't like about this bit on the lower pro is the stra these straps come off that hold it in place. I've already lo lost one of them. Got one left so I'll just leave that off for the moment. With this one to hold your tripod while you're walking along. Uh, at the bottom here, uh, it's got some Velcro. And you've got a rain cover, so if you get caught out walking around, you can, it starts raining, just uh, take this out, put it on over, you know, covering your bag. A bit of extra protection for your equipment there. Uh, places to put stuff, I normally put a bottle of water in there, it has to be quite small, it's not very big. But uh, yeah, nice big sturdy bag. Now I've had it for a couple of years, it does a good job. On this outer section here, I've got two zipped pockets, I'll show you what's inside, there's this one, uh, I have all my memory cards in there, in these square sort of pouches I keep all my uh, compact flash cards, because uh, I have a Nikon D300S which takes compact flash and SD cards, uh, in these little pouches here, great I've got loads all full up with uh, SD cards, you can never have enough memory cards, these are normally 4GB cards I carry, so if the car goes corrupt, I'm hopefully I'm not going to lose too much. I now have a Nikon D7100 as well, which is a new addition to my photographic kit. I'm using that to film this video, so I can't show it to you, unfortunately. But because of the 24 megapixel sensor, uh, I've had to upgrade to 16 gigabyte cards, which are in the camera now. In this section, uh, I've got a pen, just in case I need to write any information down. A sensor cleaning pen, if I've got any dust on my sensor, I'm quite confident I can take that lens off, get inside there, just give it a little once over to try and loosen that dirt and blow it out of my rocket blower. In here, I'll keep my mag light torch, which is great if you're doing night photography, uh, one to see where you're going, or two, just a bit of light painting. I do have the very big flash guns, uh, sorry, flash guns, uh, the torches, the flashlights, uh, like 3 million candle power lights they are if you want to light up a castle a bit further away at night and stuff absolutely fantastic so that's these two just below there you've got the laptop just have a look oh, wrong one there we go it's this one here it's the laptop compartment I don't keep a laptop in there but I do keep my Interfit 5-in-1 reflector don't leave room without it actually love the reflector whoa there we go uh, you've got the silver, black, white, gold, and the translucent. Well, I say that just fits in nicely in there. If you're a professional like me, you can just fold it up in a second and it fits straight back in there. Nice big reflector, folds up nice and small. Do that. Slot straight back in there. Adds a nice extra bit of padding to the bag, protect your equipment a bit more. Now to the main compartment. So open that up here, obviously you've got a, a lot of the camera type gear here, loads of storage and lots of little pouches and zips and stuff this side, I'm going to start here. Uh, I do a lot of strobist stuff, I like to be creative with my flash gun so I carry lots of batteries, it does add to the weight but I just can't be out in the field and have my flash guns die on me and not have backup, I just carry packs and packs of, of batteries. So they're there and there for batteries, I've got some, uh, you've got these little see-through windows, it's quite good to see what you've got. I've got a couple of batteries for my Yongno IF 602 triggers. Uh, you don't get these in the shops a lot, these CR2, so I've ordered a few online and keep them in my bag as backups. I've had the main one in the, the trigger for, oh, must be about a year now, and it's still going strong. 
Uh, in this one I keep, I use wired cable releases and I've got an extension cable if you're doing wildlife photography or something, you want to get a bit further away from the camera, uh, keep that in there. I don't use wireless because I just keep thinking they're going to fail on there, I just don't trust them. That's that. Let's go to the main compartment. Uh, my main camera, uh, before I got to see D7100, I haven't had a lot of chance to use it yet, but this was my main camera, the D300S, a semi-pro camera. Big, solid camera, I just absolutely love this camera, it's got a nice feel to it, a nice weight. Uh, stuck on the Hanel battery grip, uh, just so I could sort of bam, bam, just uh, take pictures in whatever format I wanted, portrait, landscape, and feel comfortable with the camera. I just got fed up with twisting my arms around like that. Got a battery grip, 100 pounds, good quality. It's got all the, the features of the Nikon. It's got the cursor for moving your focus points around and your fun wheels, and obviously the shutter button as well. I don't use a battery in there because I don't need it. Uh, I just use the battery in the, the Nikon D300S body. Uh, like I say, it's just for orientation. And I absolutely love it. It gives it that pro look. You know, it's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant, that is. Uh, I normally have my Nikon 16 to 85 left on the D300S all the time. Uh, kind of thought, like the Pro F28, you know, 1424 and uh, the other ones as well. Uh, I've got 16 to 85, good quality, nice zoom range. Uh, it's nice and compact. It's got the VR2 on there. Uh, absolutely love it. It's just on there all the time. It's, you know, good walk around lens that one. It's nicely in there, just put that there for now. Uh, other lenses, I've got the Sigma 105, I've had this for a few years now. Uh, brilliant for the time, not as good as the Nikon version, obviously, but uh, what I could afford at the time a couple of years ago, I've got this, does the job. Don't use it often anyway, but I probably will upgrade at some time, but great for, you know, obviously insects, plants, also portraits if you want to use it, that nice wide F2.8 aperture. Uh, there we go, we've got my rocket blower, blow out the sensor, uh, got a diffuser for the flash guns, we've got to have a spirit level, especially in the landscape photography, which I am. Let's have a look at these, just place those there. My new addition to my camera bag I had recently, I haven't had a lot of time to use it, the Sigma 70 200 f2.8, what a beast of a lens. I, I don't know if I'm compensating for something here, but absolutely love it, it's nice smooth action, oh look at that, That's, that feels good, it's got the two step uh, optimization or optical stabilisation I should say, uh, the new Sigma lens, it's really nice little window there, the, the distance scale, uh, you've got the lens collar, uh, which you can put the lens on your tripod, it's so big and heavy, whacked out on your D300, so, uh, the battery grip, you're just going to look like a professional photographer, you know, even if you take crappy shots, you're going to look good, and you're going to feel good. Love that lens. Uh, I'll put a link at the bottom of the page so you can look at my Flickr feed so you can see some of the pictures I take with uh, all this equipment. Uh, I've got two empty slots here. This is where D7100 now lives at the moment, uh, which I'm using to film this so you can't see it unfortunately. And I've got a Sigma 1020 which slots in there which is on the camera filming this as well so you can't see that either. Uh, Let's have a look now. I've got triggers and receivers. I use the Yongo RF602s. I'll do everything in manual anyway, so I don't need nothing fancy. I just need something to fire uh, my flash guns. This is brilliant. This just fits on top of the hot shoe, like so. Put that there. The receivers, uh, the flash guns just fit on top of the receivers there. Slot it in there. That can fit on your light stand. Screw it in. Bang, you just fire your camera, these are going to go off, they, you know, they, they've done me proud these are, they never fail to fire, so I highly recommend, especially if I was very cheap, got a few of them in there, I've got my Nikon 50mm, every photographer should have one of these, f1.8, £100, you can't go wrong, excellent quality, I've uh, got a cable for my trigger uh, receivers, I'm fixing my strobe lights as well, my studio lights, uh, and the flash guns, my well, first ever flash gun, the Nikon SB600, fantastic flash gun, nice LCD screen. Uh, it's got the, the wide angle diffuser, which I use a lot. Spread that light, nice, nice soft light. I've got Velcro tabs on there because I've got loads of uh, gels. I just, I've got uh, Velcro attached to them and I just put them on, stick them on, they stick straight away. 
that's it. You can get very creative with that. There's the Nikon SB600. Just watching the time over there because I've only got 20 minutes because the last practice run I went over that for waffling on. So nine minutes left, I've got to make sure. So here we go, we've got another two flash guns. I actually won a £150 voucher a couple of years ago for a competition for Jessup's. So I went in and bought two Jessup's flash guns, two 360 AFDs. Like I say, I don't need nothing fancy, I just want manual flash guns that can fire on the receivers there. Does everything I need, easy to set up. These even come with the wide angle diffusers as well. I've got all my Velcro tabs on there to be creative. That fits in there. I keep loads of cloths in my bag. They're great for separating things in the bag as well and protecting them. I've got the, the Jessup's ones, not too good. Didn't like these, these sort of spread smears around. But I bought some of the Sigma. These are really smooth. Mm -hmm. These are smooth. I use these to get water off the lenses and all that, they smear it around and just buff it up with these, job done. What else? Cable release here, this is just a standard cable release, I don't like wireless, I don't trust them as I said. Uh, just put this on, attach it, especially long exposures, star trail shots, one button, lock into place, let the camera do its thing, unlock it, what more do you need? That's brilliant. Also, because I'm getting into the star trails and stuff like that, into the Lamita, I think it's called. Uh, digital display, £13 on eBay, oh, absolutely brilliant, if it, even if it breaks you just go and buy another one, it's as uh, cheap as chips. Obviously you've got the shutter release button, you've got the L LCD display, you can just change all the settings here and set it. Uh, you've got uh, long exposures, you've got interval timers, so you can take a shot every 2, 3, 5, 10 seconds, whatever, so you can put them together and make your time lapse movies, which I think I'll have a go soon. So that just fits in there, like I said, thirteen pounds. That's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I love all, I love all these cheap little gadgets and stuff. I like testing them out. If they don't work, just get rid of them. Don't buy them again. But a lot of the time, they do a good job nowadays. Right in this section now, I've got all my filters. That's all the equipment I've got. Uh, I use the Leaf Foundation Kit, which is great. You've just got filter threads through the, sorry, thread these onto the filter thread, screw them on, uh, and then you can place this on there and then you can slot in square filters so uh, I've got two filter threads, one for the 1685 one for the Sigma 1020 on there which is the 77mm the which is the bigger wider one the great thing is 77mm fits on my 7200 so that saved me some money I have the Lee filters hard grad ND hard grad uh, filter 100mm these fit on your foundation kit there in the slots you just slot it in uh, as you can see there's a dark bit at the top and the light bit at the bottom so it darkens the sky and leaves the foreground unaffected and the other great thing about this this filter set is I've got a high tech pro 10 stop filter it stops 10 stops of light hitting your sensor so you get some very long exposures during the day smooth out them seascapes get that smooth water clouds moving across the sky and the good thing is you can work it in combination with your ND grad so you can really darken that sky and get some really dramatic effects. Once again watch out for that flicker link a bit later or below. Uh, one thing I say about the lead out, they are very good quality. I used a high tech 10 stop filter because the lead big stop has always sold out when I wanted to get it. I could never get hold of it so I just gave up in the end. Uh, I've got another 10 stop filter which was uh, pre high tech. This was the screw-in filter thread, uh, 77 mm which fitted on my 1020. Absolutely fantastic quality, absolutely love this. It's just uh, not as convenient as the square one, because you can slot it in with other filters. This one, every time you want to recompose or focus in, change the focusing, you have to unscrew it and screw it back on, and it's a bit monotonous. So, but I'll keep that as a backup, I'm just not getting rid of that, absolutely love that. Uh, is that pretty much it there? I've just got a, a camera strap which I, I keep. I hardly use the camera strap, but it's there if I want it. I can just slot these into the camera strap on my camera and use it when I want. It's got a nice thick band, better than the Nikon standard one that comes with the camera. It's, as you can see, it's got the neoprone uh, sort of stretchy bit there, which uh, 
takes for some reason takes some of the weight off your neck. It's a lot more comfortable. And I told you it was a hard job getting all this fitted into my camera bag, but uh, I managed to squeeze it all in. Really happy with my gear. I use uh, the Manfrotto 055 Pro XB uh, tripod. It's, it's very heavy. I'm looking at the carbon fiber ones, but uh, at the moment living near the sea, that's brilliant for when it gets really windy. I'm getting battered with that wind and rain and stuff. It's, it's just so sturdy. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is my light stands. Uh, this is a Koenig light stand. I got this off, uh, I think this, I think it's Amazon again actually. I can't remember. £10 for a light stand. Very light in wind. It's just going to fall over. But, you know, you stick on a, a £7 cheap bracket and your flash gun goes on that. It just goes anywhere in the boot of the car. You know, it is quite lightweight but it does the job. I can just put my light stand, my, my flash gun's on the light stand with the triggers and receivers and it does its job. You know, you've obviously got your, your little hole there for your umbrellas if you want to diffuse your light a little bit. Uh, I wanted to show you that, it's just so cheap. Uh, there's actually uh, a link, I put a link on my Flickr page where I actually told the prices of everything I've got with these stands. Uh, well worth a look, it's just so cheap. If you haven't got a lot of money, you want to save money and get creative, I totally advise that. Well, sorry I can't show you the D7100, like I said, I've just got it. Uh, but, you know, thanks for looking. I hope you liked my video. Uh, if you've got any comments or any advice or anything, just leave it in the comment box, sorry, the comment box below. Uh, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel because uh, soon I'll be doing some more videos, uh, tutorials and uh, things like that. And uh, hopefully this will be the start of good things to come. So uh, stop by again and uh, I'll see you soon.